behind. Behind. Just behind. If you are going to get a little bit of I'm going to ride with that one. 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 I'm going to ride with
going to fly. Still going to fly. Still going to fly.
come do it yourself. Yeah, man, yeah. Você tem que ficar no gimmick. 
Somebody tell me he saw you. You should eat on the plane field, Dr. Rick. Yeah, no, I love you. I had a good time. Clint told me he saw you down there. I'm going back. Yeah, I'm going to come back with you. Small man. He saw you. I'm alone. Yeah. Um, I, I was there for uh, what's, what's in time to eat? I was there for the regatta. Short. Guess who I see? I, I call, guess who I see? The first one I see is Phoenix. I said, oh, you're probably on the bike. Oh, yeah. I went to fisherman. And then he showed me a picture of the fisherman who's anchored out in the house. I love that. Somebody's going to the there, 65. Yeah. 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 So that gives me enough an idea, that's opportunity, right? Just what, when you have to do things? No, you have to go and buy them again. Go and buy them again. What's in there? The people who sell some things. We're not going to this opportunity. No, I'm not going to do this. I'll do business with them now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Depends on where they're gonna do. If they're gonna do it from there, you're gonna do it from there. Is it possible to speak from over there? That's how we so rest in peace. Okay, this So I'm present. No, you have to do that. You have to do
Yeah, yeah, man. Please stand.
and I'll invite Faith John to do the first scripture reading. Revelation 21, verse 4. Faith John.
by Jillian and Tisha Hendrickson to the worship in song.
as we invite the front lobby to do the second scripture reading, which is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 50 to 58. Praise God.
Judy, his children, grandchildren, Sister Debbie, other family members. Please accept my deepest condolences on behalf of the NDP family and my own personal family. Thank you for doing me the honor of inviting me to share this profound event with you in this tribute. We can never get used to losing a loved one. It is always difficult and painful, especially as in this case, when death comes suddenly without warning. I know it is a huge and painful loss, not only to his immediate family, but also to his community, because all his life, he was a community man. He was a man that people young and old were talked to and respected. A friend of mine in the quick, who worked in this community and knew him well, told me of that respect. And whether they agree with him or not, because we know that he had strong political views, he nevertheless had their respect. So the community too will grieve his sudden passing. We in the Democratic Party share that loss and your pain. But I was, everyone knows, a loyal and devoted supporter and a worker to our party. Going back many years, long before I became a leader of the party. But it falls to me to acknowledge that support and the work and to say thanks to him and to his family. He was tireless. I heard some accounts of it recently since his passing. In his efforts to promote, to promote the work and the interests of the NDP. No one had to ask him to do it. He saw it as contributing to his community, to his party, and was fearless in doing so. Always ready to engage in friendly and respectful political discussion, speaking as he saw it and giving a little more than he took. He did more than just talk though. He put his words into action. And there was a case in point I recall a few years ago when he walked from this used to town to highlight the situation of crime and joblessness in our country. When on his own initiative, when I prepared fresh fruit juice, and he had some help, and he brought it to us and handed it out to the workers, those persons who were in that long march, he handed it out to them as the pass by. His consideration and generosity didn't stop there because the next weekend when we continued our walk, this time we went from Baraka to Kingston. There he was again, distributing refreshments. He had driven all the way from Barley to meet us along the road and handed out refreshments to the participants as they walked. It was a very hot day, as I remember it. So I recall that the fresh fruit juice was particularly welcome. But while the drinks quenched our thirst and nourished our bodies, what was equally satisfying was the encouragement and the affirmation we felt from this act of kindness and support. Here was someone who understood the importance of what we were doing and was prepared to do something to help. He didn't wait to be asked. He just did it because he knew that it would be appreciated and that would make a difference to us. His efforts lifted our spirits. There was no doubt about that. From the reaction to his sudden death that I have seen and heard, I know that the impact of his life would be felt. And those he mentored, those in the Australian community, 
and the wider community here by curtains. When people can look back and say, and this is a lesson for all of us, when they can look back and say, yes, this person was a positive force in my life, in my community, and the lives of many others, that is a true measure of how that person spent his time here amongst us. People, his people, brothers and sisters, God's people. I urge his family and his friends to continue to work to uplift others as well as I, as well as I did. No act of kindness or generosity is ever wasted. You must all remember that. And you, and all of us, must never tire of doing them. Too often, we fail to act because we think that the problem is too big for us to make a difference. But that approach can never help. It only guarantees that the problem becomes bigger and more daunting. So, don't refuse to act because you think you can't help everyone. Better to act because you can help someone. This is what makes good people in a better community. Collectively, those small actions will make us a better country. And we are grateful to Verai for thinking that way. We are fortunate and better off because he lived that way. Many people here can and will attest to the ways in which he made things better. And his example, which encouraged them to do likewise. May he rest in peace. Thank you. Once you have known service, discipline, 
for the Liberal Democratic Party, we don't ever forget you in life and or in death. I think it was earlier this week, the vehicle wrongly drove into my yard, but they were looking for the Nigeria radio station, which is close by. And I subsequently met with the daughter of Jedi, and she indicated that she wanted Dr. Friday to speak here today, or myself. <laughs> and I said, when well, the Friday speaks, that is sufficient. She said, no, I want to say a few words. And then, I listened to the letter announcement that she brought to the radio station. And from the names of children called and the adopted children and the grandchildren, I came to the conclusion that when I wasn't taking any chances, you have to try to build the old polling station in case you can short for one or two. You can call him out because he certainly was fruitful and multiplied. Sometimes I wish I had a few more children myself. But Jedi had a big mouth. And a big hat. And he called it as he saw it. He didn't stand wherever he was and look around with his head like a spinning top to see who was listening. What he had to say, he delivered. And he also did the same on radio. And in and around political meetings, he made his voice and presence felt. Now this home wind service, for which I want to recognize the presence of his dearly beloved Rastafari community, is taking place here in Curtains on the hard court normally for sports and for culture. But Jedi was all that food, sporting and culturally rich. I still have to make the point that very often we are of the view, because we say you're known by the company you keep, that because Jedi supported the New Democratic Party, he and I, was the good and great person. Today I say the reverse. It is the New Democratic Party that was privileged and fortunate and blessed to have the support of honorable, distinguished, decent, dedicated, hardworking, committed, salt of the earth persons, like Rastaman Jedi. And he has made us in the leadership and the fellowship of the New Democratic Party better for the fact that we know and we continue and we practice and we eat it and we sleep it and we drink it that our sojourn home on earth will not be complete as a political institution until we serve resolutely and principled and salute the working people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, especially the rural St. Vincent, where our founder, father, made his name and his mark in representing this open and blessed land. I can't speak to all of his principles, especially those of the Rastafarian, but I know for a fact that people were always close to his heart. The religion to which I belong, we hold firmly to the 
important resurrection verses. Now, if we do things right, we'll see the brother again. I believe that. And so, as I take my departure and salute this Angelian hero, this Rastafarian brother, I thank him for his life of service and dedication and wish his extended family well and that they continue not just in the same way but in an even greater fervor and determination and resolution to make the dreams he held closely to his chest one day become a reality and make this country a better place that it can and should be. Thank you, God bless you and love you.
and he will stand tall in everywhere he go and say to his friends and relatives that this man is my friend, this man is my brother. Today, all of us, Judy, all of us have been here mourning the last with you and the children, the sisters and the brothers of Jedi. You know, we, we want to thank God for having somebody for many years like Jedi around with us. Let me tell you something that many people might not know. Jedi became my friend for many years. And as we go along in the years, Jedi became to respect me more and more. You did not have to tell Jedi who am I. Jedi know me. Jedi know everything about me. And Jedi said to me, you are my friend. And I was very happy to have a friend like Jedi. In Jedi days, I've been whorish. I've been whorish. I take so much responsibility. So much responsibility with all these Women, you know, many times, you know, people with their, with their problems and so on, children calling me for help in the situation. <laughs> you know, it's very touching today. I really can't be myself today to just free as I want to. But let me say to you, Judy, Jedi has died and God left us. I will always remember and the year when I got a great piece of it and I get my lovely soul to come from you. I want to say to you while Jedi die and gone, never forgot my number. I am here, I still will be here with you. And let us all be together and that's what Jedi will want. Thank you very much.
Every love alone could save you. 
because the Lord Sanitary that remains. His smooth talking and handsome looks won over a few ladies during his lifetime, which later on produced some beautiful and handsome women and men. Dredai was a skilled man. He did tiling, mason work, and even carpentry. His skills allowed him the privilege to travel across the country and even to the Grenadines for work. He worked at Musty for many years where he met a number of people. Whenever there was an excursion to the island, he was the chef and housed them until they were ready to depart. He believed that he was the best chef ever. He took pleasure in catering for people. I remember I had a dental procedure done and he ensured that whatever meal was on the menu for the day, I could have eaten. One of his signature presentation was sticking the fork in the middle of the plate. I know he did it on purpose because it always made me smile. He was excellent at baking bread. He would wake up around 3 a.m. to prepare the dough, so by 6 or 7 a.m., persons could have gotten a hot slice of homemade bread for their breakfast. I wanted to know what most family and friends remembered most about Dreadeye. There are so many good memories. Many remember him as family oriented. When Ma, Javid, and Marvin's mother passed, he took on the roles of both mom and dad until he met Julie, who was the apple of his diamond. He is also remembered as dressing classy. Whenever you met him on the street, he always was well dressed and had a pep in his step. He attributed his classiness to his sister Debbie and daughter Regina. He would say, whatever I want, Reg and Debbie would hook me up. I'm not cheating enough. <laughs> Chilling remembers him as a good man. He was jovial, never a sad day with him. He was historic and knowledgeable on the things that were going on in St. Vincent and the Red Leaves and the outer world. He was remembered as someone who did not hold malice with anyone. He expressed himself and went about his way. Mr. Derby was very active in the Rastafarian movement. He devoted many hours to 